Thank you. I'm happy to be here today. I teach at the Earth School. It's in the East Village. Um, and this is my 14th year in the classroom, and I couldn't be happier there. So I'm going to start by sharing this read aloud with you that I share with my students within the first couple of days of the school year, every year. Um, it's called Mama, Where Are You From? And it's by Marie Bradby. Mama, where are you from? Where are you from, Mama? I'm from Monday mornings washing loads of laundry from the wringer washer and peach baskets full of laundry to hang on the clothesline, strung from tree to tree, the sun bleaching the sheets, the wind whipping them dry. I'm from beans, green, lima, and pea, picked, strung, snapped, and shelled into pans and then put out on the stove to simmer for an hour. I'm from peddlers driving a creaky old wagon with a big old horse and calling up and down the street, fish man, fish man, I've got fresh trout, sprouts, sprouts and croakers today, fish man. When did you get them? My mother would ask. They're real fresh, came in the dock early this morning. All right, she'd say, I'll take some croakers. Calling, rag man, rag man, got any rags to sell? 10 cents a pound. My mother would give him a bundle of worn out clothes and later stash the money in a cookie jar. Calling ice man, ice man. If it was real hot, we would get two blocks of ice. Mama would crack it with a pick and give me the chips to suck on. Mama, where is that place? Where is that place, Mama? It's where the edge of the town met the countryside, where the city sidewalk ended and chickens ran through yards, where families grew into a neighborhood as close as a knit sweater, where we threw up a hand to everyone we saw, where I saw Miss Mary passing our house in the morning on her way to work, and Mr. Thompson coming home from baking bread all night. It's where the school bus took my older brothers and sister way across town, past school after school after school, until it came to a school where all the children were brown, some light, some dark, some in between. Where days took their time and morning lay on the rolling hills as long as she pleased, where I played under a gumball tree that took up the whole sky and wondered why Miss Mary cleaned someone else's house why the sidewalks ended at the edge of my neighborhood, and why my brothers and sister didn't go to the school right up the street. Where afternoons, my brothers delivered newspapers, and I sprinkled and rolled up clothes while my sister pressed with two flat irons, one to use, the other to heat up on the stove and be ready when the first went cold. Where everything we wore and used was starched and ironed, even dish towels and underwear. Where Friday evenings we fried fish outdoors and my cousins would come over with cherry pie and ice cream. We would sit around tubs of ice soda in the backyard and daddy would say to cousin Albert, what'll you have, what'll you have? Where we children played one, two, three red light while the adults listened to the ball games on the radio, the Washington Senators and the Baltimore Orioles, where Daddy played his old Duke Ellington and Count Basie records, and we danced in the shadows, switching our hips, popping our fingers, and pretending to be adults. Mama, can I go there? Can I go there, Mama? Yes, we can travel through roads in my memory. Let's see, up the stairs, sliding down the hall, passing beds full of children, heads full of new dreams, nights full of stars. Yes, I am that morning washing, bean snapping, wagon watching, tree swinging, Miss Mary waving, brown bus riding, clothes sprinkling, croaker eating, red light playing, finger popping, star dreaming girl. That's where I'm from. So I share that with my students every year, and then I share 
one or two or three of these. These are the different versions I've written through the years of where I'm from. Because the first week of school, kids want to know, who's my teacher? Who is this lady? Where is she from? So I'm going to read a little bit of uh, one of them to you. Um, I'm from a little town with cornfields, apple orchards, and a muddy river. I'm from a little town with little mountains and big forests of oak, mountain, and shimmering white birch. I'm from an old wooden house on a street full of really, really old stone houses. I'm from the big room in the attic. I'm from a family of three sisters with weird names and a dad and a faraway mom. I'm from silly sisters who name the cats after vegetables and dress them in doll clothes. I'm from Granny's lasagna and Grandma's matzo ball soup, from Red Snapper from the boat and peanut butter and fluff for dessert. I'm from Japanese tea ceremony, sitting, monkey gods, hala on Fridays, singing in the church choir by candlelight, and gnomes in fairy houses on the mossy forest floor. I'm from a small town and a big imagination. So it's your turn. I'm going to ask you right now to write your own I'm from poem. So I'm going to ask you to take about 10 minutes and write. If you need paper, let me know. Um, if you feel like you want to move away from my meeting area <laughs> and go back to your seat where you may have a pad or a computer, please feel free. Great. Um, I think when I do this with students, um, everybody finds an entry. I noticed that people pretty much started writing right away. There was some stopping and thinking, but pretty much everybody has an entry right away when I'm with the kids. Um, and I have to say, I said to you, go write one. With the kids, we do more brainstorming and more noticing about the book and about the poems that I share with them. Um, I want to say that, so these are this year's students' work right now up on, on the slideshow. Um, and I have them write their poems, and we spend a couple of weeks doing this. And then they make an illustration. So they choose something from their poem that they want to make a visual image to go with. And we work in watercolor and Sharpie. Um, and that gives me an opportunity to talk about how we use materials and all sorts of things in our classroom. But right from the get-go, this book, this project, and this artwork has signaled something to the class about the culture of our room and who we're going to be together in our classroom. Um, there are lines from that book that demand some talking about, past school after school after school until they reached a school where all the children were brown. Um, the sidewalk ends. Miss Mary cleans someone else's house. Um, there's a lot there to unpack. And so the way that our school is structured, um, we have thematic studies that last a whole year. And one year that study is immigration, both past and current. Um, and the other is rights and responsibilities or the study of justice and how that shows up in our world and where it doesn't show up. So this book is a good uh, introduction for either of those. Um, so I think uh, the, this work for me helps me immediately know my students. I have dialogue with them about the things that they've written about. They have gotten to see who I am from the versions of my poem, and I share with them the multiple versions I write, because I write a new one every couple of years. And I share those and how that changed for me and what I chose to write about each time. Um, and they enjoy sharing them. And I have to say, of all the displays that I put up outside my classroom every year, this is the one that generates the most conversation from families. Our school is a school where children are dropped off at the classroom door, so the families come down the hallway every day. And my hallway is right near the front entrance. My classroom is right near the front entrance. Families that I've never met before stop and talk to me about student work. They stop and talk to the kids about it in the morning um, and at dismissal. Um, and this is just one of the kinds of things that I do in my classroom. Um, writing is something that 
can be so daunting for children and for adults. Um, the idea of writing can be so hard, and yet this is this easy entry at the beginning of the year that says, hey, we all have something to share. Let's talk about it. Here's, here's a way to do it. Um, one of the things, well, I guess I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you notice about the images that go with these? What do you notice about the artwork? It's all different. Someone just said it's all different. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Really, they're very realistic, not much imagination from the way that we, we think. Yeah, go ahead. Different perspectives, yeah. It fills the whole page, yeah, they take the whole page. Same thing, yeah, um, yeah. They're not signed. They're signed on the back, <laughs> so that I can know whose is whose to, to hang them. Um, I love the difference of what shows up. And one of the things that always strikes me is at the beginning is there's always a child who has terrible handwriting and is an amazing artist. And so it's another way for me to see the strengths of kids. Um, this is just random. This is, it's not that I chose these particular pieces because, oh, they have really good artwork or, oh, the poems are really, really strong. I just randomly chose um, the one all the way to the left. That child said, this is my view. He eats dinner at that table, and that's his bowl of ramen, looking out his window at the city. Um, and I loved that he said that. Um, I thought that was really sweet. And the one all the way to the right is a child who goes back and forth between living here in the city with her mom and living upstate with her grandparents, and her years seem to be alternating. Yeah. Right, it's great, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's no window, it's just right there. Um, yeah, it's, it's always amazing to me to see what they come up with. So it's such a window into who the kids are. Um, okay, so as I said, this is an early signal of our community culture, what my expectations are in the classroom and who I hope will be together as a group, that we will bring our full selves, ourselves from home whoever that is, whatever's important to us, their sports teams show up in here, their after school programs, their family, the travel, their favorite foods. One child, I was brainstorming with her this year and I said, well, what's your favorite thing to eat? And she said, fresh corn. And she had such a strong feeling about that fresh corn. It was all over her poem, it was great. Um, and the other thing, I didn't read a version to you guys of my poem, but one of mine talks about living in two houses, that I talked about what exit on the throughway I lived in with my father and what exit on um, 84 I lived with my mother at. And that was a signal right away to the kids that we're going to talk about things that can be difficult in life in this class. My parents were divorced. They divorced when I was very young. I was very honest with the kids about what that experience was like for me of living in two different homes. And they instantly, they're like, there are kids who will instantly say like, hey, that's me too. Or, oh, I don't even have a dad. Or I don't even have a mom. I live like this. And so suddenly that's out in the circle for all of us to talk about. Um, so it's warts and all. It's all the things that make our lives. I often say to the kids, you know, adults like to tell this lie. The lie that childhood is easy. And it isn't always easy, is it? And so they get to have this space to talk about the things that aren't easy. The going back and forth between homes and forgetting a favorite book or a something. All those pieces. Um, and this project creates this container. It creates this space, this time for us to talk about things that are real in a safe way. It's a writing assignment. You can decide what you want to put on that paper. You can decide what you want to talk about and how much you want to share. But it invites and it contains. Um, and so those of you who were here yesterday or who are familiar with uh, Leslie Koplow's work and the uh, emotionally responsive uh, practices, this, 
this, when I heard those words, I thought, yeah, that's it. That's, that's what we're doing, is inviting kids to bring their whole selves and giving them a safe space and way to do that. Um, I have, I wrote my kids a letter this year. 